All right, 30 episodes down, 20 more to go. Let's finish off talking about the Legends of Bikini Bottom anthology special with Sponge Kano. This episode is about Squidward proclaiming he's the most miserable person in Bikini Bottom, right when a volcano starts erupting. And it's revealed by some ancient dolphin warrior that the only way to satisfy the volcano is to sacrifice the most miserable person in Bikini Bottom. Oh sure, why not? Yeah, as if this season hasn't shown its hatred for Squidward enough. Now positive things first. I consider this episode one of the better episodes of the anthology, but I only consider it slightly worse than The Curse of the Hex, so yeah, that's not exactly saying much. I do think this episode has a passable opening. I mean, it does set up things decently for the episode's climax, and I think the song in it is decent. But once again, this episode largely falls into the boring, forgettable category. First off, I'm starting to notice that when it comes to Squidward's misery in this season, it's very inconsistent why he's miserable. In episodes like Keep Bikini Bottom Beautiful and The Monster Who Came to Bikini Bottom, Squidward is miserable for very understandable reasons. The world is just straight up against him and demands he suffer. But in this episode, it's more like the plays the thing where Squidward is miserable just because he's a dickhead. He treats everyone horribly, and it's for reasons that are really mild. You always leave trash on the table. Your teeth chatter. And just like the plays the thing, they clearly do this to make the audience feel okay with how he's treated. But unlike the plays the thing, where it just felt like the idea wasn't fully realized. Here, it just reeks of desperation. Like, they really want their audience to accept his suffering, so they just take it to the extremes. And it's such an obvious move on their part. Plus side, even though it is an obvious move, this episode still manages to avoid becoming infuriating. But because they are resorting to these desperate extremes, it robs the episode of any real substance. Like... By the end, you don't feel like you really got anything out of this episode. And speaking of the ending, what an obvious cop-out. It's revealed the only reason Squidward was supposed to be sacrificed was because the town didn't let the ancient dolphin warrior finish his sentence. Sacrifice must be made of the most miserable person. I know it. We have to sacrifice the most miserable person. I mean, yeah, that's an obvious joke, but again, it's just stupid. It's a weak-ass cop-out, and it's more proof that they're just throwing shit to the wall. Yeah, overall, this is just a very unfocused episode, like most of these anthology episodes. Like, I know this anthology was supposed to be a series of parodies of famous urban legends, but you would think that idea would still give them a lot of material to work with, but it always feels like they got the setup, and just made the setups the episodes. They're so unflushed out and leave so much to be desired that it's just a massive disappointment. So, yeah, I'm just gonna wrap this section up by calling Sponge Kano the poster episode of an overall poor anthology. <laughs> Stop staring, SpongeBob. You're affecting my productivity. <laughs> Now we move on to the other 22-minute special from this season, The Great Patty Caper. Now, I did talk about this episode already in my Top 10 Best Spongebob Specials list. Looking back on it, it probably doesn't deserve to be in the Top 10, but I still think it's a fine enough special. I think it has a decent little setup, I think it can be very fun at times, and I think it handles the 22-minute runtime pretty well. And considering how Spongebob's last stand was just forgettable and boring, this one feels like there was some improvement made from it. So, yeah, maybe a bit hit or miss, but I still enjoy it, and I think it holds up pretty well. And now I've got to go all the way there to get it. Now we move on to that sinking feeling, and... Uh, Believe it or not, this episode is an Emmy-nominated episode. Yes, of all the episodes from this season, this was the one that was considered good enough to be nominated. That is an insult. 
It's about Squidward forbidding SpongeBob and Patrick from playing in his yard and separating them. So to get around that, they dig tunnels under Squidward's yard so they can continue playing. Now, this episode ended up becoming slightly more infamous after Pie Guy considered it the worst episode of the whole season. But I don't think it's anywhere close to that. I don't find it to be the worst episode or even the worst episode ripoff of the season. Honestly, I find myself genuinely laughing at a few lines from it, which a lot of episodes from this season couldn't even manage to make me do. Aw, Squidward's house sounds like it has an upset tummy. Must have been something that it ate. It ate Squidward? that would do it. Also, they managed to throw in a pretty good reference to the classic arcade game Dig Dug. Yeah, the episode, while clearly a ripoff of Chum Caverns, does seem to get some inspiration from Dig Dug, and uh, to its credit, it works it in decently. And not to mention, it also gave us that meme of Squidward looking out his window at Spongebob and Patrick playing. I mean, I guess that's something. But that's all the positives I have to say about it. Spongebob and Patrick are still annoying, the episode is still pretty damn boring and unmemorable, and there's borderline nothing to recommend. Even the positives aren't that positive, they're mostly generic things that should be in these episodes. And the fact that it's an Emmy-nominated episode makes little sense to me. I don't see anything that makes it stand out from all the other forgettable episodes. At least, not when you compare it to other episodes from this season, and yes, there are some from this season that have more effort, more originality, and are much more entertaining. Overall, that sinking feeling is nothing more than just that. A sinking ship of an episode. I knew you two reprobates were behind this. Yeah! We're reprobates! That was an insult. And we're insulted! But next is Karate Star, yet another stupid Patrick episode. Now, when it comes to Patrick episodes, I wouldn't exactly put this in my top 10 worst, but it still has moments where I find it grating. It's about Patrick saving Spongebob from choking and wanting to learn karate from him as a favor in return. But Patrick goes out of control with his karate and starts destroying the whole town. Now, unlike a lot of episodes from this season where it feels like they didn't have a lot of ideas and resorted to padding the episodes out, here it feels like they had too many ideas and didn't want to get rid of any of them because... This episode is completely cluttered. First off, Patrick saving Spongebob is clearly done accidentally, which makes the rest of his behavior feel even worse because it doesn't soften any of the blows that are to come. Also, when Spongebob is trying to teach Patrick karate, he gives up on him almost immediately, and the teaching session is actually kind of funny. It's very humorous seeing how creatively Patrick messes up but they spend like a minute on it before moving on to Spongebob and Patrick, discovering Patrick has a good karate chop. In fact, the training session is so brushed over that when they get to this, it feels forced as hell. But then the rest of the episode relies entirely on it. Like, you were on a roll with that training session. That would have been fun to see for a little longer, and it would have made the karate chop feel more climactic. And after Patrick discovers this, they go from having him using it for basic needs, to just being a dick about it, to Patrick's hand becoming self-aware and taking over resulting in a rampage. Like, looking at episodes like Gary in Love, Groat Spout, and I Heart Dancing, they're making the most out of a simple idea. Here, they're trying to make the most out of countless ideas, and... You can't do that for an 11 minute episode, because nothing in this feels complete. Every idea feels like it was given up on halfway through. It's similar to the second half of The Curse of the Hex. And going from Patrick being a dipshit with his karate chop to being an unwitting passenger in its destruction, it's such an obvious attempt to trick the audience into not hating Patrick that it's laughable in all the wrong ways. That being said, I do give this episode props for actually teaching interesting facts about starfish in the end, when Patrick tears his hand off. I thought you gave up chopping! 
Boy did. Unfortunately, we sea stars have limbs that grow new bodies. Hey I had to look that up because I didn't know if that was true or not. But, yeah, apparently in some cases, that does happen. Damn, starfish are amazing creatures. Overall, I don't think these ideas were bad. If they spend a little time on the training session, tweaked up the way Patrick saved Spongebob, and got rid of Patrick using his karate chop to be a jackass, this could have been a good episode. Not passable, good. Instead of just another wasted episode. But, I guess it is impressive that they found a different way to ruin it. But don't worry, Spongebob, I'm a sea star. My limbs grow back. And now we move on to Buried in Time. Yet another episode that I forgot existed, and after re-watching it, I'm not surprised why. It's about Mr. Krabs making a time capsule and charging people to put stuff in it, and Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward end up getting trapped in the capsule. This episode shares very similar problems to The Curse of the Hex, where the idea is actually decent and something you can do a lot with, but the first half is very dragged out, while the second half is very rushed. The first half involves five minutes of Squidward bitching about the stuff the Bikini Bottomites bring to donate, and it's confusing because why does he care so much? When has Squidward ever cared about anything work-related like this? Oh, no, you don't! No. Oh, that's why. He cares so much so the plot can be moved along. Also, the episode is clearly inspired by SB129, and uh, credit where it's due, they did try to go a different enough route with it to where it felt inspired by the episode, but not in a rip-off kind of way like the Imitation Crab knockoffs. And it's a setup that I think could have resulted in a decent episode. But again, it feels like they got the setup, and that was that. That was all they felt they needed. Now the second half, there's a decent little part where they start imagining the future, and their imaginations are different enough to where it looks like there was thought put into it. And I do find them interesting. But they only focus on them for a short time, because there's another plot point in this episode where Plankton wants to steal a copy of the formula that Mr. Krabs threw into the capsule. So yeah, because they spent the first five minutes dragging out Squidward's asinine behavior and focused so much on the uninteresting donations the Bikini Bottomites bring, by the time they do get to these plots, they don't have enough time to make the best out of them. And the only real thing I found funny, like genuinely funny, was the end where Plankton actually does get the formula, but he ends up having to literally shit it out. Don't hurt yourself, Poopsie. But aside from that, yeah, this is just your typical boring episode with little to no rewatch value. I don't know what more to add that I haven't said already, so yeah, bottom line, this episode is nothing more than a time waster. <laughs> Has it been 50 years already? What? Yes, I knew I'd still be hot. But now we move on to a great episode. In fact, we move on to the best episode of this season, Enchanted Tiki Dreams. The one deserving of that Sinking Feelings Emmy nomination, in my opinion. In case you can't tell, this is another episode I put on my top 10 best Spongebob episodes from season 6 through 8 list, so I don't really have anything to add to what I already said, but to sum it up, this episode feels like an apology to Squidward, and basically gives him the episode off to just relax. And it's all thanks to Spongebob and Patrick. This episode is very funny, it's got a mellow feel to it, the song in it is one of the best from the season in my opinion, it's so hard for me not to feel relaxed while listening to it, and when things do eventually go to shit, Spongebob and Patrick are willing to sacrifice their bodies to make Squidward happy. Overall, it's one of the best episodes from the bottom dwelling years of Spongebob. And it's one that remains consistently great, no matter how much I watch it. What else can I say? This episode is simply enchanting. Here 
And now we move on to the abrasive side, which is about Spongebob wanting to learn how to say no to people, and Gary literally orders him an abrasive side. But the abrasive side starts taking over and ruining Spongebob's life. Now first off, I think this episode has some of the best comedy from this season. A lot of the humor is very fast paced, it gets creative at times, the part where they remove the abrasive side, I think is on par with the earlier seasons, in terms of being ingeniously executed. The abrasive side has, what I think are some of the most quotable lines from the season. How oh, about a little help with this suntan lotion, huh? Don't you think you've had enough? All you're missing is a bowl of butter. Butter? And while he is a jackass, he has very good reason to be. He's literally an abrasive side. That's another thing, the setup of this episode seems to be based around the definition of the word abrasive. But unlike most episodes, they're not just coming up with the setup while not adding anything to it. Instead, they're using it as a base for their episode and adding to it by turning it into a Jekyll and Hyde story. It's very well thought out. So yeah, humor-wise and setup-wise, I think it's amazing. That being said, I will admit I can see it turning people off due to its poor treatment of Spongebob. He gets the raw end of the deal the entire episode, the bikini bottomites treat him horribly, and even his friends contribute to ruining his day. Pearl's got her heart set on a new pair of shoes. Your job is to tell her no. But Mr. Krabs, today is my day off. Spongebob! <laughs> but I really don't have an issue with it because, despite all of that, none of it feels forced to me. Like, it's not cruel for no reason or for a poor reason. It actually feels like Spongebob could have avoided all of this by simply saying no. So it actually gives him reason to want to try this abrasive side while not lingering on it. And I think that's very advanced for this season. Now, looking back on this, I feel I should have given it a spot on my top 10 best Spongebob episodes from season 6 through 8 list. Maybe in the 11 through 20 range, but still. Overall, this is a funny, enjoyable, and very well-executed episode. Absolutely nothing to feel abrasive about here. I wouldn't hang out with you for all the money in Krabs' mattress. You don't know how long I've waited to hear those words. And now we move on to Earworm, another episode like the abrasive side, where the meaning of the word seems to be used as the setup. It's about Spongebob becoming obsessed with the new song to the point where he becomes incapable of not singing or listening to it. And it's revealed this is because Spongebob has literally contracted an earworm. Now, this episode also seems to fall on the simplistic side, but as far as simplistic episodes go, I don't think it's too bad. Humor-wise, I think it has some pretty creative and funny visual jokes. It managed to keep me engaged the whole time. And most of all, there does seem to be effort here. First off, anyone who's ever had a song stuck in their head that won't leave would probably find Spongebob's portrayal very humorous because sometimes it does feel like you're going crazy when that happens. Also, I don't mind the song too much. I mean, yeah, they overplay it, but they have reason to. That's the entire point of what this episode is trying to make comedy out of. And I find the last few minutes where everyone tries to help Spongebob very entertaining. That being said, there is still a lot of season 7 written all over this episode. It gets slow at times, the scenes feel somewhat dragged out, and it really doesn't feel that memorable. But as it is, I think it's something worth watching at least once. I think you can get some fun out of it, and when it was over, I didn't feel like my time was wasted, which has been a pretty common trait so far. So yeah, not the catchiest tune out there, but a decent tune to tap your foot to. So meaties, oh meaties, don't ever weep if I so much as cast me into the deep. Hmm. Hmm. He ain't budging. But now we move on to hide and then what happens. Now, I've called episodes like A Day Without Tears and The Main Drain, episodes I think people think of when writing the show off as just a kid's show. Well, you can add this episode to that list too, but 
Good lord, it's even more boring than those two. It's about Spongebob wanting to play hide and seek with Patrick, but Patrick has no idea how to play. And when it's Spongebob's turn to find Patrick, he's unable to find him and constantly bugs other characters while looking for him. This episode is a whole lot of nothing. Everything about it is dragged out, underthought, unfocused, unfunny, and unengaging. It opens with three minutes of Spongebob trying to teach Patrick how to play, while simultaneously acknowledging they've played it thousands of times, which is such cheap writing, and the punchline of What's hide and seek? What's hide and seek? What hide and seek is? runs then almost immediately. SpongeBob is also obnoxious to watch. I mean, everything about him in this episode is so half-assed, and him bugging all the other characters will either bore you to tears or annoy you. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure you're sure? Yes. Are you sure you're sure you're sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you sure you're sure you're sure you're sure? But what's weird is that, despite all of this, SpongeBob and Patrick are not the biggest issues. The issue is the whole episode is padded. Everything in it feels like filler. Hell, I think the problems with this episode can be summed up with this fake out they try to throw in. Oh, not because you know it's not going to be Patrick. Yeah, the episode reveals right away where he is. But it's because everything about it is so poorly executed and lazy, right down to the character's name. My name is Patrick. Patrick, not Star. Normally, I try to be easy on episodes like this that are just boring because... I get it. Kid shows are limited to what they can do. Well, they're usually limited to what they can do. But this one, it's so easy to see what little effort went into it that I think even a kid wouldn't find it that entertaining. It feels like something you'd put on if you were trying to get your kid to go to sleep, which I guess gives it purpose, but it's not the purpose you usually want. Overall, this is the most boring and forgettable episode so far from this season. Even if you do like it, I think you'd be hard-pressed to make a good argument for what this episode actually does well, compared to all the other episodes. Hide and then what happens? You change the channel. That's what happens. Gary! You put Buffy down right now! Bad boy Gary! Bad. And this is what you should hide from! I just have one question. Ask away! What's hide and seek? Well, let's end this video with Shellback Shenanigans, the third Imitation Crabs ripoff from just this season. What does that say when you rip off a season 2 episode this much? It's about Plankton disguising himself as Gary so he can get the formula, but Spongebob thinks Gary is sick and takes him to the vet, where, well, shenanigans happen. Is he sick? Meow? Is that yes? Now first off, this episode is easily the best Imitation Crabs knockoff I've seen from this season. And if you're expecting me to say, but that's not really saying much, you'd be correct, it's not saying much. But, I don't actually mean it in that way. I mean it in, this episode is actually decent. Like, Greasy Buffoons or I Heart Dancing Decent. To start, Plankton's plan actually makes sense, because the Krusty Krab is having a Bring Your Pet to Work day. Secondly, yes, Spongebob is dense here, but this is one of the few times his denseness actually seems to make sense. It's not like someone's in the kitchen with Sandy where Plankton makes himself visibly noticeable, and Spongebob and Krabs see it, react to it, but choose to ignore it, Plankton at the very least is wearing a disguise and keeping himself disguised. Also, Spongebob isn't really the focus here. The focus is more on the creatively funny ways that Plankton is being treated, all of which serve as a punishment, but also don't go over the top. Now open wide! <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? And not to mention this episode does exactly what I felt they should have done with one course meal as Gary catches Plankton in the act and beats the hell out of him. 
So Krabs makes him a bouncer. That's perfect. Oh, there, Fido. <laughs> Honestly, if this was the only imitation crabs knockoff of the season, I wouldn't complain. I mean, it would mean someone's in the kitchen with Sandy wouldn't exist, so that alone would make this a better season. But this is a good example of how you recycle an episode's plot into something different enough to call your own. Yeah, it's not perfect. It has its own moments, like the Who's On First reference, which, while I admit is a nice touch, I thought was kind of dorky. But honestly, I enjoyed this episode. I gladly rewatch it, and I had a lot of fun with it. Hey, what do you know? This is the first time I'm ending one of these videos with a decent episode. Way to go, Shellback Shenanigans. You know, it's, it's really poignant. What is? Well, now that you can talk, we're, we're running out of time to say I love you. Ah! Alright, well that's four videos down, one to go, and then I can finally move on to something better. Lord knows I'm gonna need it. Anyway guys, I'm sorry it's been a while since my last video. If you don't follow me on Twitter or didn't see my community post, I was working on a top 10 list and when it was close to done, like 99% done, my computer's hard drive crashed, and stupid ass me didn't save any backups of the video. So in the meantime, I'm gonna finish up this seasonal review while I rework on that video. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.